I've been hearing a lot of leaders when I ask them, you know, what, what do you think your teams need in order to be good at innovation? The leaders will turn around and they say to me, they need to be more courageous. They need to be, they need to, need to be more brave. My teams need to be, you know, braver. And my attitude to that is innovation should not be a courageous act. Like, you know, submitting your financial report is not a courageous act. Coming up with a marketing plan is not a courageous act. Uh, filling out an HR application review, whatever, is not a courageous act. These are things we assume are just day-to-day -day things that people do in a business. But we won't create the context that makes it so good that innovation doesn't have to be a courageous act. Instead, we don't want to tackle the barriers, so we tell our teams to be more braver, you know, run against the wall, come on, just do it. It's not the job of leadership to pick ideas, to pick winning ideas or, or to choose the best ideas. Right? It's the job of leaders to create the context in which the best ideas emerge. It's when a flower fails to bloom, it's one of my favorite sayings that I can't remember who said it now, but when a flower fails to bloom, you don't start shouting at the flower and bloom, come on, give us some, give us some flowers or whatever, right? give us some petals or whatever. You, you start looking at the garden in the soil and seeing what's in the soil that's stopping the flower from blooming. And, and that's the same thing with innovation teams, right? You have to think about the ecosystem in which people are operating and what are the barriers that are blocking them from doing their work and then what are the enablers we can create to help facilitate that work. And, My favorite innovation, the innovations that happen is a business model layer, where they take something that you could easily dismiss and then put like a really cool business model around it. And then it's like, okay, you don't need to have breakthrough technology to be successful. So the Nintendo Wii is a really great example of that. The Nintendo Wii was deliberately made from off the shelf pieces, right? While Sony and, 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 and Microsoft are competing on making their consoles more and more powerful so that they can have video games that render more and more realistically. The Nintendo Wii went down, it went down the technology chain and did something that was made of like just the off the shelf pieces. The, 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 the games weren't really that realistic. They were kind of like, you know, cartoony, but the value proposition was great because it wasn't for your avid gamer, right? It was for just regular people. So they created a business model where they, they, they could make revenue and income and profit from their machines and make revenue impact and profits from the games themselves. 